CTV's W5. There's no regulations and no license required to set up a zoo. Problematic conditions and questionable safety in roadside zoos. If anybody can go out and buy a lion, tiger, primate, wolf, that's a problem. We have to continue to try to protect those animals. Things can always go wrong. Of course they do. And the black men were refused enlistment. They were not accepted. The deep roots of racism in the Canadian military. When they got sick, the white doctors refused to take care of them. How much has changed since then? Nothing. We're going to do something about this. Here is Avery Haynes. Welcome to W5. Millions around the world watch the true crime series Tiger King, an insider look at a dodgy roadside zoo. Well, here in Canada, exotic animals are also kept at similar zoos. They are unaccredited and often unmonitored. Molly Thomas investigates how the zoos survive and why some say they are downright dangerous. Is this going to be something or was this something? Oh, an alligator. Oh, okay. This is secret footage from an animal rights investigator. We all have his wiggle and his hiss. He traveled more than 6,000 kilometers over three months all across Ontario, posing as a tourist, documenting the conditions of what many call roadside zoos, the mom and pop shops of the animal world. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some of what he found. A large alligator, housed in a pool you would find in your backyard. A monkey pacing and twirling repetitively around its enclosure. And a handler holding a baby, petting a lion through a cage. He filmed on behalf of the advocacy group Animal Justice. Camille Labchuk is their executive director. Overall, we'd say the picture was pretty bleak, both for animal welfare and also very concerning for public safety. I'd say what's very common at roadside zoos is animals in cages that don't meet their biological and psychological needs, where they have little to do other than sleep or pace back and forth all day. Ontario has the most roadside zoos in Canada. I would say Ontario is the Wild West. Um, there's almost no oversight over zoos. There's no regulations and no license required to set up a zoo. So I can't build a patio in my backyard without a permit, but I could open up a zoo and fill it with wild, dangerous, exotic animals. Another group, World Animal Protection, filed a complaint with the Ontario government in September 2022. It names 11 zoos for a slew of alleged problems, such as tigers with low fencing, below industry standards, children sticking their hands into cages of ringtail lemurs who have sharp teeth, and animals like this alligator constrained to a tiny tub. This water quality, this is like having a sign that says, we never remove the feces from this. We took the activist photos and videos to Georgia Mason. So that's telling you that this is dirty? It's telling you that it's dirty. Yeah, that's right. She's a former Canada Research Chair and is the director of the Campbell Centre for the Study of Animal Welfare at the University of Guelph. Yeah, this is really disturbing. So this abnormal behaviour is stereotypic behaviour. Stereotypic behavior is abnormal, repetitive movement, often caused by artificial or barren housing. Georgia Mason is recognized as a world expert in this area of research. Yeah. How do I know that it's stereotypic? Partly from how repetitive it is, but partly because it's got these strange additional movements that you wouldn't see in nature. So the strange head twirl, and then this, there's moments where this rocking and twirling, you would never... You wouldn't see that in the wild? No. And then there's also moments, it's hard to catch, where the animal's biting its own arm. It's doing it now. Can you see that? Yeah. It's biting its own arm. So this, um, you actually hardly ever see this in zoos. You typically see it in poorer conditions in research laboratories. And so is it like a, a, a coping mechanism? So it really seems like it might be some form of self-soothing self of an mm. animal really an extremist. So typically when you see stereotypic behavior, it basically means the animal has had poor welfare over their whole life. This monkey was housed at the Burvey Zoological Park in King Cardin, Ontario. Now just four months before this video was recorded, 
Provincial inspectors seized 41 animals from this facility, claiming they were in distress. And remember this video, filmed at that same zoo? Activists claim this staffer was too close to this king of the jungle. We showed Georgia Mason that too. These animals, their claws are gonna be, I don't know, three centimeters long? I mean, huge. So you could accidentally get hurt. But there's a child, a small <laughs> child. It does slightly worry me that you're teaching a child that lions aren't dangerous. <laughs> yeah, if he's got a relationship with these lions, that's great. It could enhance their welfare. But maybe do all of this when the public, you know, after hours. Hmm. You know, that's when you do this. Because right now you're modeling to the public, hey, you can take small children right up to a lion. As a rule, that's going to be a foolish thing to do. We also asked about seemingly ramshackle enclosures at a zoo called Waddles and Wags in Eganville, Ontario. Despite the fact that their cages appear dilapidated, a handler boasts that provincial inspectors offered mild criticism. We passed with flying cars. The only thing he said was that the cages look shabby. So we asked about this giant gator confined to a pen with a backyard pool. So it's really just a sort of concrete box filled with water, really. There's nothing to do. There's not a lot of stimulation. As a general rule, environments this impoverished, as a rule, they're just not ideal. Uh, do you wonder if these animals are suffering? Well, for some of them, I don't wonder. I mean, I just know. So for the ones showing the most extremely abnormal behavior, you just know that their life has not been good. And it's not just those facilities. Activists also filmed at Papanak Park Zoo near Ottawa, where a handler is in the cage with a large Kodiak bear, feeding it right out of the palm of her hand. And this, a highly social monkey meant to live with other primates, here, seen all alone. That zoo has had a history of problems. In 2016, Animal Justice secretly filmed at Papanak. They found a baby wallaby forcibly taken from its mother and handlers using unnecessary force. The group claims they even caught a zookeeper admitting to hitting this tiny lion cub to train it. Animals have also escaped from here. Well, a lion on the loose, the public at risk. Zoo Eventually, that lion had to be shot by its keeper. Things can always go wrong. Of course they do. No one understands the challenges and joys of these operations better than Mark Drysdale. He ran three roadside zoos for almost two decades. We met up with Drysdale at a horse ranch in southern Ontario. I had lions, tigers, I had uh, snow macaques, quadamundis, kangaroos, zebras, lynx, wolves, pretty much everything. And Drysdale always did things his own way. Large lions like this... Oh, what's mommy got? ...were treated more like house cats. My kitty? He started his first facility with his then wife in Waynefleet, Ontario. Animals were housed in their backyard. There's our boar. Hi, Moto often allowed to roam free on their property. This is one little troop of three. You know, I've always gravitated towards uh, monkeys, um, cats, always like cats. Big wolves. cats, we're talking like lion, big cats, not big just cats. cats. Yeah, big cats, I've always liked big cats. <laughs> not even a millionth of a percent of people have gotten to the point of knowing what it's like to lay down and be able to be so comfortable with a lion. I slept with them. So did you feel like you were part of the pride? Oh, I was. Oh, I was. It's you not were. a feel. It's not a feel. It you, is. Like you were... Absolutely. Absolutely. He says he wanted to share that feeling with others. So he started letting the public in for a donation. People heard that we had them. And then one day we had an open house and just thousands and thousands of people showed up. But things took a turn when community members and town officials started raising safety concerns. We had these incidents that made me the enemy. People jumped onto it and all of a sudden, you know, you're the bad guy. Coming up. If there were a license required, then this never would have happened. Did a lack of oversight lead to mishaps? The mistake that we made was letting people come out in the first place. When W5 continues.
You guys are great, eh? Aren't you, Bomber? You're a great horsey. <laughs> this is Mark Drysdale, a former zoo operator who has an uncanny connection with animals. Uh, you love animals, they seem to love you. I mean, <laughs> they're congregating around us yeah. at this moment. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these ones I ride, so yeah, yeah, they know I'm here and they think it's time to go for a ride. He says that bond extends to top predators. At least go get the ball for me. Treated more like pets on his property. Oh, no, you're not getting my camera. But even for Drysdale, someone who knows his animals so well, the danger is real. He has the scars to prove it. Once, he was even pinned down by a 400-pound lion. I will be honest with you, I thought that might be it. I thought this may be, well, this, everybody makes a mistake. This might have been my mistake. But what and was the mistake that day? I just lost my balance. That's it's all that it simple. It's all it takes. But how do you ensure, Mark, that a wild animal is friendly? I mean, not only with you who's there every day, but for the people that are coming in and out of your facility. You can't. You, you really can't. That was the problem. There were more close calls at Drysdale Zoos. W5 found 17 documented biting and scratching incidents from Wayne Fleet alone. Public health ordered him to shut down, and his small township banned exotic animals in a city bylaw. Drysdale had to move with his animals. Hi, and welcome to Roaring Cat Retreat in Grand Bend, Ontario. This is big old, big old, and I do mean big. Only to have that municipality pass its own exotic animal bylaw. A further court injunction ordered the removal of his animals. Drysdale was forced to move again. You were in one community, you know, you got shut down. You went to another community, you tried again. I mean, you, you obviously wanted to keep doing this. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, but well, they're my animals. They were, they were like family. Yes, I will move wherever I need to move to keep my family together. But the community pressure was too strong at his third zoo in Maynooth, Ontario. And eventually, provincial inspectors laid five charges each against Drysdale and his former wife for animal welfare violations. That facility, his last, closed down in 2021. Rob Laidlaw is the head of the nonprofit Zoo Check and has been tirelessly working to shut down operations like Drysdale's for decades. Is we're playing whack-a-mole because if we stop somebody like Mark Drysdale or if a municipality stops somebody like Mr. Drysdale from operating, he can just set up elsewhere, which he did. If there were a license required, then this never would have happened. Laidlaw says in Ontario's current system, small communities are unfairly forced to shoulder the burden of shutting down these properties. Ontario does have laws to protect animals and welfare officers who inspect facilities. Well, I think that the inspectors that are in there uh, are, are well motivated and, and, are, and are very good. Uh, but the system itself, it's, it's this retroactive system. You know, logic should tell anybody that you deal with it up front and, and prevent problems. If anybody can go out and buy a lion, tiger, primate, wolf, aardvark, spitting cobra and, and keep it, that's a problem. Shockingly, in many parts of Ontario, you don't need any qualifications to do just that. Hey guys, here from the local home team. This video advertises the sale of a zoo called Greenview Aviaries near Chatham, Ontario, that went on the market in early 2022. There's everything here from ducks and swans to literally lions, tigers and bears. To buy and operate it, there's absolutely no experience necessary. The zoo sold in May 2022. Like Greenview Aviaries, most roadside zoos are not accredited. But some of Ontario's zoos try to meet a higher standard for animal welfare and public safety. Standards set by Canada's accredited zoos and aquariums, also known as CASA. We went to the largest accredited zoo in the country, home to more than 4,000 animals, including giraffes, gorillas, and hippos, to find out what's different. Dr. Gabriella Mastromonaco is the zoo's senior director of wildlife science. The three pillars of accreditation are very clear for us. Welfare, safety, and visitor engagement. Welfare, uh, you know, the physical and psychological well-being of the animal at all times. The safety of the people and the animal. 
And in what we mean by visitor engagement is that there has to be the, the education, scientific knowledge, the transfer of knowledge. We have to exceed in all areas to become accredited. For the Toronto Zoo, that also includes 24-7 vet care, conservation breeding programs, and enrichment for exotic animals like Vasily the tiger. What enrichment is, is providing um, di different artifacts, either natural or it can be man-made, where, where it gives the tigers some opportunity to show their natural behaviors. Because I don't see any staff in this enclosure while, while they're eating. Um, it, that's intentional? So there's a series of protocols where uh, humans and animals never cross the same space at the same time. Ever? Ever, yeah. The, the only time we would be up close is a medical procedure and the animal's asleep. Another stark difference, clear fence and enclosure standards, especially for carnivorous kings of the jungle. <laughs> that's a good cat. <laughs> So you need your primary barriers, you need secondary barriers. We've got the, the guardrail here, we've got the moat, and then the wiring that they can't cross. How high uh, are we talking about with, when it comes to these fences? Because of the line's ability, it's a 19-foot fence so that we can ensure that they don't clear that height. What would you like to see happen to those unaccredited facilities? If we had a magic wand, it would be ideal that we could lift all of these unaccredited facilities to becoming accredited facilities. That is going to take time, energy, resources that I know are not there right now. So in the meantime, we have to continue to try to protect those animals with legislation, with other kinds of support, um, and with people, communities, and, and professionals caring. While many activists don't believe animals should ever be in cages, they're more worried about unaccredited facilities. Like this one. Remember this monkey from the Burvey Zoological Park? We showed that footage to zoo representatives. Their lawyer, Eric Gillespie, sat down with us. Um, let me ask you about the, the monkey, which was of major concern to our animal expert, who, who saw repetitive pacing, abnormal behavior that would point to trauma. Uh, what would you say to that? Boogie does appear to be what they refer to as just overexcited. It can be something that Boogie is perceiving as threatening, or it can be something that Boogie is perceiving as desiring, like a treat. Regardless of if it's someone stimulating them outside the environment or not, why is that monkey biting itself? When an animal is either overexcited or agitated, their behaviors will be whatever they're going to be. Is Boogie the monkey healthy? This is the first time anybody has said, we see something that causes us concern. As for the staff member with a child petting a lion? Uh, any concerns from the zoo about, about being that close to, to an animal like that? They emphasize that the only people who are doing that are people who are experienced. And frankly, everybody who goes to Burvey actually is fully supervised at all times. There has never been an accident. An animal welfare service has been to that property to visit many times, and they haven't identified it as an issue. But Animal Welfare Services has recently identified other concerns at the zoo. In April 2022, provincial inspectors removed 41 animals they deemed to be in distress. What the province said was there was a difficulty in their mind with a single barn. The zoo has made improvements and we've provided a letter from their veterinarian indicating many of those improvements were made within a couple of days. Eric, the fact that there had to be changes made to the barn, does that not show that there were some problems there? Burby obviously has been looking after their animals for about 30 years. They don't have a history of a lot of difficulties. The specific concern with the barn was ammonia levels and just general cleanliness. And people can agree to disagree on those kinds of issues. Burvey appealed the decision to remove its animals, but lost. Meanwhile, other roadside zoos admit problems and say they want to do better. Like Greenview Aviaries, where kids were allowed to touch lemurs. Alicia Patton bought the zoo this past spring. A lot of things do need to be changed and need to be more structured for everybody's safety. Waddles and Wags, where the large gator was housed in a backyard swimming pool, did not reply to W5's request for a response. Neither did Papanak, the zoo with a history of animal escapes. 
while activists hope Ontario licenses all zoos in the future. Number 27, S241. Proposed federal legislation that would improve protection for exotic animals, it's making its way through the Senate. All told, this bill bans over 800 captive, non-domesticated species at roadside zoos. It's named after world-renowned primatologist Jane Goodall. And it would be just wonderful if this bill is passed so that Canada can prove that it is on the forefront of humane treatment of animals. The new law would limit owners from acquiring and breeding animals in unaccredited facilities. Camille Labchuk is the executive director of Animal Justice. What it would do is probably make the generation of animals currently in, in many zoos in this province the last generation of animals to suffer in captivity. Even Mark Drysdale, a former zoo operator, acknowledges that this country and province needs to make changes. You recognize that there were pro there's problems here. Well, there's more than problems but you can't deal with it after the fact. Like, should there be provincial regulation that says these are the clear rules? Oh, absolutely. Like licensing? So, absolutely. Most of the people that I know that have these animals that are sensible people, they all say if we just knew the rules, we could work around the rules. A year after his last zoo closed down, a much more reflective Drysdale is conflicted over how he ran his facilities. The mistake that we made was letting people come out in the first place. It's, it's obviously not safe to be sticking your hands into any cage, and um, we should have had more safety stuff in place. But even with that change of heart, Drysdale has had enough. Oh, I've, I've given up on this. Yeah, I'm out. But you're out, why? It's not worth the battle anymore. One person, two people, 10 people against 10,000 people, you're, you're not going to win. And you don't, you feel like that was? It, worth it 100%. That you could have put me through 10 times the hell that the world has put me through. And I wouldn't give that experience up for anything. Oh, what do you got in there, babies? You got babies? If passed by the Senate, the Jane Goodall Act could become law by 2023.